Namaste, it's Renee, and welcome to my podcast, Peace, Love, Abundance, a place where I talk about many things from yoga to herbs, Ayurveda, skincare, adds up to daily self-care. Basically, I'm all about self-care. And knowing all these different modalities to be able to take care of yourself on a daily basis puts you into a more of a place where you can truly take responsibility for your own daily self-care. Today, I continue my series on skin care, and the subject today is what causes wrinkles. Now, there's obviously many things out there, but I'm going to cover five or six that are some of the more common that whenever I talk to people, I'm an esthetician, so I do facials. Also, when I do yoga, people ask me for advice on certain things here and there because it's presumed that... I am healthy, and at 48 years old, my skin looks pretty good, and I get lots of compliments, and then people also ask me what I do for my skin. And if they don't know I'm an esthetician, then I like to just joke around about saying, well, I have a really good esthetician that helps me. So with that said, I definitely do practice what I preach, believe in my methods, and I'm not a huge product seller. That is one reason why you don't see me too much in the mainstream of selling products is because, A, I don't always believe that one product is for everybody. I love to do, um, as a master herbalist as well, I love to do DIY, do it yourself. I really do believe that the skin has basic needs and daily, if you're taking care of it, then you shouldn't have to go buy ridiculously expensive skin care creams that are on the market these days. Now, if you are going to buy something expensive, go out and buy some real, true, amazing rosehip oil or something like that. Getting that single ingredient, but let me tell you, that single ingredient of rosehip oil has more nutrients than you could imagine. And if you're going to spend the money, get something like that because you know where it's sourced from, especially if you research it. Research where it's sourced from, that it is truly 100% pure, natural, organic, all that good stuff. So if you're going to spend $200 on something, go get some pure rosehip oil. And honestly, $200 worth of rosehip oil is going to be like 16 ounces. You can put that on your body if you want to, rather than just little dabs under your eyes for $200. All right, anyways, I am kind of veering off my path just a little bit here. But anyways, I'm practical, I'm Taurus, so I'm very practical with my methods. So what causes wrinkles? And in your daily routine, what might you be doing to contribute to the wrinkles? Or what might you be able to be a little more aware of so that you don't create more? The number one thing is not exfoliating enough. Now, I don't want you to blast yourself or use sandpaper and get crazy about it. My last two episodes, especially the last one, number 45, but episodes 45 and 44 cover some exfoliation. I definitely recommend you listen to those to keep this podcast short today. Exfoliation, you don't have to do it every day. I exfoliate every day with a Clarisonic brush. I use the delicate and sensitive head for the Clarisonic, so I'm not overdoing it daily, but daily my skin is getting some kind of stimulation. This stimulation will remove the old layer. Sometimes the old layer, the dead layers of skin on your face can start to make what wrinkles you do have. It makes them look deeper because you have this buildup of dead skin cells. Also, removing them and exfoliating stimulates new skin cells to produce and also encourages your product, like the rosehip oil I suggested. It will allow that rosehip oil to be able to absorb a little bit deeper into your skin and you can get the benefits of all the beautiful nutrients in rosehip oil. It will stimulate the collagen and elastin as well. Now, there are theories out there that when you lose elastin, that's the stretching of your skin, how it stretches. There are theories out there that when you lose elastin, it never comes back or even per se, it can take a long time, especially as we get older. A baby, an infant has lots of elastin in their skin and they're growing like crazy. They grow into all that extra skin. 
As adults, we're not growing into our extra skin if we have it. As a matter of fact, once you stop growing, if you continue to grow, also com commonly known as gain weight, you're stretching out your skin as you gain weight. And then the minute you lose that weight, you're left with this extra skin. A pregnant woman knows this better than anyone, that after you have the baby, you have all this extra skin for a few weeks. And like I said, if you're younger, if you're having babies in your 20s and 30s, sometimes the elasticity will mellow out and regain some of its tension. Older we get, though, the less elastin we have to be able to, um, per se, abuse it. The sun breaks down elastin a lot. It targets, not necessarily targets, I don't want to say the sun is, comes up in the morning and says, hey, I'm going to target everybody's elastin today. But the sun is definitely a big factor in the elastin in our skin. And I will get to that a little bit later when I do talk about the sun more. But uh, elastin, you want to take care of it. So as an adult, we definitely get to that stage in life where you don't want to gain weight and sometimes you don't want to lose weight. That's where I am at 48 here. I admit I could probably still lose a few pounds, but if I lose a few pounds, I just have extra skin because my elastin is starting to show signs of not wanting to recover. Now, collagen, collagen is what gives you the fullness of your skin. And collagen, there are lots of theories out there that you can use collagen boosters, collagen itself, like bone broth. Uh, there's collagen supplements these days even. Collagen supplements can go either way. They can either be a booster, meaning there's no animal byproduct in them, but it has herbs and such that stimulate your body to produce its own collagen. And then you can also buy a collagen supplement that does have, say, a bovine source or these days even a marine source of animal byproduct that adds to the collagen in your body. There's a lot of benefits in collagen or even doing collagen boosters. But coming back to exfoliation, exfoliating also stimulates your body to produce more collagen and helps tighten up the elastin because dead heavy skin cells are going to make the skin sag. So if you do have any chance of getting your elastin to recover after being abused and stretched out, then you need to be exfoliating. All right. Also, remember, I have episodes 45 and 44 that talk a little bit more about exfoliation as well. But I went pretty deep there. That was a mostly new information that aren't in those two episodes. So you're in the right place right now. Just go back and listen to the other two if you want to know more about exfoliation. My next subject is going to be your sleep habits. We spend a third of our life sleeping. And it really comes down to how you sleep or lack of sleep and when you sleep. Starting out with when. The ideal time to sleep is somewhere around that 10 to 6 a.m., 10 to 5 a.m. You know, you could go to bed at 9, be up by 4 or 5 if that's your schedule. But there really truly is a window. So you nighttime people who love to stay up till midnight or later, you are depriving yourself of some of the best sleeping hours. Now, not just for your skin, but for your body and your organs in general. Your organs have a lot of functions they need to accomplish at night, and they want to start that process around 10 o'clock at night. You miss that window of opportunity, and you throw the whole domino effect off of what your organs are trying to accomplish while you're asleep at night. And possibly more on this in a future podcast. I actually do like to talk about the circadian rhythm and our bodies and the organs and what organs are active when and at what time. So there really truly is that window. Get your ass to bed by 10 o'clock. If it takes you a little bit to fall asleep, go to bed at 9. Hopefully by 10 you've fallen asleep. Don't wait till 10 and then try and fall asleep and then you're up till 11 or 12. Along with that would be lack of sleep. So again, if you're staying up till midnight or later and then still having to get up at 5 in the morning to go to work or work out, maybe you exercise and train early in the morning, you're not giving yourself enough sleep. So you have lack of sleep. And napping, while napping a power snooze, like 20 minutes of laying down or meditating, I'm all for. But when you have those days when you can't survive without a nap, 
It's because you're not getting enough sleep at night. Ideally, once again, all the organs in your body have specific jobs to do, and many of those jobs are to be done at night. So when you have a lack of sleep and you didn't give your organs the rest and recovery and their time to do what they need to do, then those organs are probably feeling sluggish and not performing at their peak performance, therefore making you even more tired, less productive, and it just isn't worth it to have a lack of sleep. Just don't put yourself through that. Again, we spend a third of our lives sleeping, so that means you still have a whole another two-thirds of your life for living. So live in your two-thirds and sleep for a third. Your body, your skin, your health will thank you. All right, now how you sleep. How you sleep is very important. Ideally, even dermatologists support and suggest that you sleep on your back. Sleeping on your back is supposed to be the best for your facial skin, definitely. So speaking about the face and the wrinkles on your face, when you sleep on your side, that's when you can start to get the crow's feet on the outside of your eyes, smiling. You know, some people just call them the smiling lines. So if you just have some superficial lines because you smile a lot, kudos for you. But as you're getting older, if you're a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper and those wrinkles are starting to get more predominant and deeper and deeper and you know that you sleep on your side or your stomach a lot, Work on it. Try and retrain your body to be able to sleep on your back and your facial skin will look so much better. You'll almost wake up in the morning just ready for your day. Less swollen eyes. So when you sleep on your stomach or on your side, you're getting all the fluids to pool in that area, especially if you tend to sleep on one side more than the other. Uh, When you sleep on your stomach, we all have to turn our head usually to one side or the other. If you're not turning your head to one side or the other, you're propping your chin on a pillow probably. And then you're stretching out all the skin on your neck. And if you tend to have that second, third, and fourth chin or a lot of wrinkles on your, on your, under your chin, your throat, your neck and your decollete, it could be because every night when you're sleeping on your stomach, you're overextending that skin. Again, the elastin, right? You're expecting way too much out of the elastin for eight hours of sleep by sleeping on your belly and having your chin propped on a pillow. You're just stretching all that out. And then it takes all day maybe for it to recover. And then you sleep at night and stretch it all out again. Sleeping on your stomach and your side, I mentioned it briefly, can cause some of the puffiness because all the fluids are settling into the front of your face instead of being able to drain through the lymphatic system, which runs down through your temples, the outside of your temples, behind your ears, and down into your throat and your chest and onward throughout the rest of the lymphatic system. So just some things to note. Are you a side or stomach sleeper? Now you might be thinking if you're young, if you're in your teens, 20s, even 30s right now, and you're like, I'm not seeing much wrinkle right now and I love to sleep on my side and my belly. I'm going to continue to do this until I see wrinkles. I'm here to tell you that when you start to see wrinkles, it's too late. You've already started to create the damage and the pattern and the muscles. Now, you might be able to slow it down by switching to sleeping on your back to where you're not progressively making things worse. But if you're young, figure out how to sleep on your backside now so that you don't have to worry about it when you get older. Here's a little tip as an esthetician. The majority of our skin damage is done when we are young, but we're damaging the deeper layers and the muscles and the collagen and elastin. And it just takes several years for those layers to work their way to the surface. With exfoliation, we can help break down the old, create more. But the majority of your damage, whether it's from the sun, your daily habits, whatever it is, the majority of the damage is done when you're younger. You just start to see it when you're older because it's working its way to the surface. So you're never too young to think about how you sleep and change your habits. If you are an avid stomach sleeper or side sleeper, you might have a learning curve of a week or two of not getting the best sleep because you're consciously trying to figure out how to sleep on your back. But let me tell you, one to two weeks of losing sleep 
is going to be better than a lifetime of putting that pressure on your skin and face. And then when you are older and those wrinkles are starting to get very deep and past that superficial, you're going to wish you tried harder to sleep on your backside. Some tips for sleeping on your backside is to prop pillows around you so it makes it a little bit harder for you to roll onto either side. Put a bolster or pillow behind your knees so that your legs aren't super straight. They have some bend to them. There are several ways that you can do this to kind of remind yourself not to roll over. For starters, start out laying on your back. I know you're thinking, oh, I love to sleep on my stomach. That's how I fall asleep best. Well, how do you know if you haven't tried in a while to figure out how to sleep on your back? It's up to you. How important is your vanity to you? You can continue to sleep on your stomach and buy $200 eye creams, but there's no guarantee that that $200 eye cream is going to help you with those wrinkles. It might be more something that you're doing a third of your life, right? A third of your life you're in bed. Think about it, then make your decision based on that. All right, moving on. Similar to the way you sleep, using straws or rubbing your face a lot, touching your face and leaning on it can definitely contribute to wrinkles. What I mean by leaning is having one hand on the side of your face and then you're scrunching that cheek. Just like having your face on a pillow, right? But you're just using your hand on your desk and you're scrunching your face. Straws will make you, even if you're not a smoker, make you look like you're a smoker when you get older because you are uh, puckering your lips to suck on that straw for several years. And again, you're never too young to start. If you're a teenager, 20s, even 30s, just stop now. Stop using straws. And rubbing. When you put on your skin care, be careful that it is gliding on or you are patting it on. Don't rub your face excessively. This includes when you start to get tired and you want to rub your eyes. Just resist it. Don't rub your eyes. Also, not letting your skin breathe. There's a product line out there. If you were to buy a product line because you're just not a a DIY person, you're very busy, I get it, and you want to be able to just rely on a product line that will serve you well. And there's a product line out there that is called Evan Healy. The name is E-V-A-N Healy, H-E-A-L-Y. Their theory is that the skin only needs oil, water, and clay, and you need to let your skin breathe. So they've taken away the concept of the heavy nighttime creams. They say, and I believe them because I don't use heavy nighttime creams. I never have. And again, I get compliments on my skin. But not using a heavy nighttime cream so that your face can breathe at night. And when they're talking about oil, they're talking about like the rose hip oil. Those oils that are very good for your skin. They're not super thick. Uh, they absorb into your skin, especially if you've been exfoliating, which clay helps exfoliate a little bit as well. Doing a clay mask once or twice a week helps exfoliate so that your body can absorb the nutrients from the oil and not just sit on the surface of your skin and not allowing your skin to breathe, but your skin needs to breathe. Again, I feel like I'm very indicative of that and proof of that. I don't wear makeup and I don't use heavy creams. So I think the proof is in the pudding. Let your skin breathe, let the beauty shine. I know at first it seems uncomfortable to not wear your makeup, but I think the more you wear makeup, the more you're kind of destroying your skin and not letting it breathe. So a week or two without makeup and you might start to notice you have a better complexion, more natural glow, and you get used to seeing yourself and it can be beautiful. I really do believe it can. All right, the last one is sun. Yes, the sun is hard on our skin. But unless you have a job where you work outside, like maybe a lifeguard or something like that, But I'm talking about a job or a daily routine where you truly are in the sun, say, a third of your life. Just like we sleep a third of our life, maybe you spend time in the sun a third to two-thirds of your life. If you are a farmer, gardener, work construction, granted, you are exposing your face to the sun a lot. 
And sunscreen, definitely in that instance. If you are out in the sun that much, yes, use a lot. But if you're not dedicating your life to being out in the sun every day, kudos to you. It's awesome that you aren't out there very much. So that's one reason why I kind of have sun lowdown on my list. While, though, I do want to say, though, if you like to sunbathe an hour or two in the sun, just to fully exposing yourself in the middle of the day when the rays are at their strongest, that full exposure, just raw like that, could probably possibly be equivalent to several hours, even though you're only out there for a couple hours. Remember, the day throughout the day, there's key times when the sun's rays are the strongest. So definitely pick your battles. Walk your dogs in the morning and the evening so that you're getting a little bit less sun exposure and so on. But how does the sun break down the skin? Why is it so harmful for the skin? Rays, the, the UVA, the UV, UVB, and UVC. Those rays come in and they break down the skin. They break down the elastin. Remember I talked about this a little bit way back when we talked about exfoliation. Elastin, breaking down the elastin in your skin. The sun creates an enzyme. So when those sun's rays hit your skin, it creates an enzyme. I talked about enzymes a little bit in the exfoliation episode, but enzymes are used to break down protein. Collagen and elastin are protein in your body. Your skin is protein. So when the sun's rays hit your skin, it creates an enzyme that starts to break down the protein, aka the collagen and elastin. So when you get a lot of a sun exposure and you're not recovering by giving your skin, maybe taking some collagen supplements, exfoliating it, hydrating it with some oils and water like hydrosols, then your skin is really affected by all that. So yes, there is something to be said with the sun. However, I'm a sun lover, and I do believe everything in life can be good for us in moderation. When I am out on the water, I live in Maui, so I try my hardest to wear a a shirt, like when I'm surfing and paddleboarding and such, I wear the long sleeve shirt, sunscreen, hats, especially if I'm going to be out in the middle of the day. My favorite thing to do is just go out early in the morning or even in the evenings so that I'm getting a little less exposure. I'm not often out there in the middle of the day when the sun's rays are the strongest and most damaging. So definitely pick your battles, pick your time, enjoy the sun because the sun is an amazing thing and it helps us produce vitamin D, which vitamin D has many benefits for your body and your skin and so on. I don't feel like you need to avoid the sun like the plague, but just be smart and mindful and careful because the long-term effects are starting when you're young. Skin damage or sun damage is definitely done when we're younger and we think that we are able to be this superhero that nothing gets us down, nothing affects us. I have beautiful skin. I'm young. Well, let me tell you, while you're rocking that beautiful skin, that's when you are destroying your skin the most. So you're never too young to start taking care of your skin better and better care of your health, your body, because the way you treat yourself in your youth sets you up to how you're going to be when you are older. And I'm a Coloradan. Originally, where I come from, we're at a high elevation. We were really close to the sun. So even in the winter, we had to be careful on some days. In the summer, we had to be super careful. Now I live down here in Maui. I get the sunshine 365 days of the year. And I definitely need to be mindful. But with that, I love the sun. And I enjoy it. I love being outdoors. I'm just super careful and mindful. So today... A journey on wrinkles and what causes wrinkles. Yes, I hope maybe this resonates with you. Stay hydrated. Water's a big one. Make sure you're drinking water, staying hydrated on top of taking care of the collagen, elastin, getting the exfoliation, sleeping on your back. Resist using straws, rubbing your face or leaning on it. And even, you know, every now and then stand on your head. If you can, get an inversion table. If you're not into doing headstands, get an inversion table. Get some blood flow to the upper part of your body. If you're a yogi and you're practicing yoga, that's awesome because you're getting that lymphatic system flowing. 
even down dog or holding a forward fold is a form of going upside down. So you don't have to get too crazy. Every now and then just hang out in a nice forward fold. Get some extra blood and nutrients towards your head. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can always email me directly at reneestall108 at gmail.com. My website is my name with a dot online afterwards. It is not a dot com. I don't even really want to say it anymore by confusing you. So my website is Renee Stahl, all one word, dot online. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. Here, you might be listening to me right now on iPod, SoundCloud. I also have a YouTube channel with several yoga videos, as well as I post my podcast up there. So if you have a friend that doesn't listen to podcasts through their phone app, suggest maybe they check it out on YouTube. And I'd love to hear some feedback, some ratings. Please, please rate me. That's how other people find my podcast. Share, because sharing is caring. And I am happy that you are here today. If you're still listening to this, kudos to you. You made it to the end. And this is where I'll leave you. I leave you with peace, love, abundance, and namaste. Namaste.